a feast for Ganesh. Kubir, the god of wealth, was also the treasurer of the gods and had access to all the riches of the earth. As king of the Yakshasas, he ruled the fabulous city of Falkapuri, which rivaled Indra's capital in Smenda. Since he was deformed and found it hard to get around on his own, Vishukarma, the architect of the gods, had created a special chariot for him that could fly everywhere. It was large enough to carry a whole city. Kubir was extremely proud of his possessions and believed he was superior to other gods. He lost no opportunity to flaunt his riches to be little others. Shiva, on the other hand, had an absolute contrast to Kubir. He led a frugal existence on Mount Kailash and had no desire for fine clothes, jewels and luxuries. His followers too were ascetics like him. Kubir did not think much of Shiva for living so humbly and just could not stomach the fact that other gods respected Shiva more than him. He was also envious that so many humans worshipped Shiva. So overcome was he by envy that he decided he would prove to Shiva once and for all that he was greater of the two. So Kubir hatched a plan and set off for Shiva's abode on his fabulous chariot. Shiva received him with his usual courtesy and asked him what had brought him to Mount Kailash. Most respected Lord Mahadev, Kubir said, I have come here for a purpose, to invite you to my humble abode. I have long wanted to throw a feast in your honour and have already sent out invitations to all the gods. It will be a great privilege if you attend. Please be kind enough to oblige me with your presence. Shiva guessed what Kubir was up to. He smiled and said, I am touched by your sentiments, dear Kubir, but it is not possible for me to come to your feast. However, since you have already invited many guests, if you don't mind, I will send my son Ganesh to represent me there. But there is one thing I must mention, he said. He has an enormous appetite and is next to impossible to satisfy it. In fact, if you have the slightest misgivings about this, I would suggest you take back your invitation. For Kubir, this was like an open challenge. He replied, How I wish you would have been able to attend, Lord. But I will be more than happy to welcome your dear son. Then he laughed. As for him being a big eater, I can assure you that I will be equal to the task of providing adequate food. If I, the God of Wealth, I am incapable of satisfying a little child's appetite of what use are all my treasures. Shiva smiled mysteriously once more. All right, he said. Take the boy with you. But remember, I have warned you. You will have your joke, Lord, Kubir laughed. And now, as soon as Ganesh is ready, I will take my leave. Kubir flew off with Shiva's son to his magnificent city. The Yakshasas were amused to see the small guest who was dressed in such ordinary clothes, but giving him due respect, they welcomed him with folded hands. As soon as they entered his gorgeous palace with its gleaming marble floor, gold and jewel studded pillars and silken hanging, Kubir summoned his attendants. Get the ceremonial bath ready, he said. Bring the most fragrant oil and perfume for my guest and the most expensive clothes so he is suitably dressed for the feast. Ganesh was given a long and luxurious bath. After that, the attendants decked him in garment of finest silk, bordered with gold and embroidered with pearls and rubies and hung fabulous jewels around his neck and his ears. Then 
Ganesh was led to the grand banquet hall where plates and glasses of solid gold had been laid out for the guests. After the invocations to the gods had been made, the delicacies began to arrive. Ganesh began to savor each and every dish with great relish. Kubir served his honored guest himself, saying, Ganesh ji, try this delicately flavored dish. And here's another crisp puri for you. Your father said, you have a good appetite. You must satisfy it fully. As he played the gracious host, he kept thinking, Lord Shiva is really fond of joking. How much can this little child eat? But after a while, Kubera's arm began to ache. And he decided to let his attendant take over the job. He also began to get little worried. No matter how quickly Ganesha's thali was refilled, he managed to empty it in a trice. Worse, he would immediately cry, I am still hungry. Bring more food. More food had to be piled up on his plate at once. The servants became so busy serving him that they could not take care of the other guests. In any case, all the others had stopped eating to watch Ganesh with wide-eyed amusement. They watched him polish off enormous plates of modak, laddus and pedas and wash it down with large jugs of buttermilk, then gobble up huge bowls of kheer at breakneck speed. Watching this, Kubel became increasingly anxious. Maybe Shiva had not been choking. Maybe he was actually serious when he said that his son has an insatiable appetite. Kubir began to sweat so much that his silk garments were soaked through and through. The sight of Ganesh devouring everything in sight turned him dizzy. Worse, the child kept waving his hand, demanding more and more. Tell the cooks to prepare more food, Kubir shouted at his attendants, almost tearing off his necklace of enormous diamonds in frustration. This child cannot go home hungry. There was utter pandemonium in the kitchen. The cooks rushed to and fro, chopping, grinding, mixing, kneading, stirring and frying. They were so tired that they could barely stand. Some were beginning to kneel over with exhaustion. Others were trying to sneak away, terrified at what was happening. The head of Kubir's household came to him in panic. Your Majesty, the, the cooks have collapsed he whispered in Kubir's ears. And, and there is nothing left to cook. We have emptied out all stores. How is that possible? Kubir screamed. How can my larder get empty? I am the god of wealth. Go, buy some more provisions. Bring me something to eat, Ganesha was shouting. Don't you have any more food? All right. Maybe I'll try this gold plate. It looks very valuable. It should taste good. He took a bite of the plate and crunched it up in seconds. Kubir almost fainted when he saw all his plates, the jewel-studded glasses, the golden chairs, and his fabulous chandelier vanish into Ganesha's mouth. He fell to the ground, prostrating himself before the insatiable child and said, I beg you, Lord Ganesh, have pity on me. Please spare my palace. Kubir realized that he was on the brink of ruin. The whole of his magnificent kingdom was about to vanish. What was he to do? Who could he ask for help? His heart sank as he thought. Who else but Shiva? He had no choice but to appeal to Ganesh's father the very god he was trying to be little. God of wealth leapt into his chariot, dashed to Mount Kailash and flung himself at Shiva's feet. Forgive me for my arrogance, Lord, he pleaded. You warned me, but I was blinded by pride and underestimated your son. All the sumptuous delicacies I served were not sufficient to fill Ganesh's belly. He has consumed all the food in Alkapuri 
and is now devouring my palace. Please, I beg you, save me. I will never boast of my riches again. Shiva smiled and asked Parvati for a handful of roasted rice. Give this to him, he said. The simplest food offered with love will be more than a feast for Ganesh. It will satisfy his hunger at once. By the time Kubey returned, almost the whole of fabulous city of Alkapuri was in Ganesh's belly, and the little lord had acquired an enormous paunch. Kubey went down on his knees and said, Dear Ganeshji, I may be the god of wealth, the guardian of all the treasures of the earth. But this is all the food I have left now. I offer it to you with love and utmost humility. Please accept it. Ganesh tossed the handful of rice into his mouth and stroked his tummy. Then letting out a large burp, he said, Now I am quite full. Ever since then, Ganesh has had a large belly. As for Kubir, he became an ardent devotee of Lord Shiva and was a recipient of many of his favours in due course.